we're going to come into Gomakasana in Talasana. So this is cow face pose <coughs> and you may need a belt for this. So we're going to take the left arm out and see can we help it to just maybe come up a little bit and then stretch up with the right arm and then you can catch hold of your belt or maybe you can catch hold of your fingers so that we're in this action. Okay, so let's try doing that together. Place the belt over your right shoulder. Have the inner edges of the feet together, toes spreading, weight down into the outer foot bones. Make sure that you've got contact with the little toe side of your foot. And then we're going to stretch out with the left arm. Just have it slightly below shoulder height and create space. Now if there's any problems in that shoulder with uh, rotator cuff injuries or whatever, just keep that arm stretched out, don't take it up the back. So you turn it and take the back of the palm into the center of the spine and then just use your right hand on your left elbow to gently encourage it. So we don't want to force these um, muscles and joints into doing poses that they're not quite ready for yet. You can gently encourage it to lengthen but don't overdo. Then stretch up with the right arm, bend and catch your belt or catch your fingers. Keep the weight back into the heel bones. Now, You've got to sink the abdomen to the spine, move your front ribs towards your back ribs and breathe through the nostrils. Okay, and releasing, and we'll go to the other side. So you may need to put a belt on the other side if you're using a belt. One side is usually better than the other in this pose. So you can stretch out with your right arm, extend into the fingertips just below shoulder height. If you're taking it up the back, turn and rotate in the shoulder joint. Take that hand between your shoulders and use your left hand to encourage the back of the palm to lift up. So it's this action, just a gentle encouragement, not a forcing action. Okay, so when you've got that to where you can get it, extend up with the left arm, really get that stretch and length in the left waist before bending at the elbow. Keep that left upper arm close to your left ear and extend the left elbow towards the ceiling. Extend the right elbow towards the floor and move in with your dorsal spine, but don't let your lower ribs pop forwards when you're doing that. Breathe, smile, <laughs> and releasing down. Okay, well done. So I'll just show, just moving my audio equipment around a little. We're going to turn the arms and stretch them up by the ears. So let's do that together. So if you have a knee, hip or back problem, you step your feet apart. Otherwise, jump. Toes facing forwards, pressing down into the outer foot bones, stretching out into your fingers, opening your chest and breathing into the space that you've created in your chest. Fine, inhale, ex exhale through the nostrils. All right, now we're gonna rotate the arms at the root. So turn the arms. It's not just the palms that's turning, you're turning right in the shoulder joint. Lift your kneecaps, lift your thigh muscles, lengthen your tailbone down, move your front ribs to your back ribs. Inhale, extend the arms up by your ears. So stretch into the fingertips, open out in the armpits, Really pressing firmly into those outer foot bones, lifting your chest, lifting your frontal pelvic bones. And now take the arms down and release out of the pose. Step or jump the feet back into Tadasana and breathe and steady. 
Okay, so here we're going to use a chair. We're going to come into a bar of adjustment twist on the chair. Now, if you don't have a yoga chair, really don't worry about that. We can work on a dining chair. <clears throat> if it's got a bit of a dip in the seat, then put a cushion or something in there to lift the seat up a little. So we're turning in bar of jasna twist to our right to start with, and then you can swivel yourself around or turn the chair around to come to your left. So start out <clears throat> with the feet together, knees together, press your hands down onto your thighs, and lift your chest. So we're lengthening and extending in the spinal column, breathing into the space that we've created, take the outer tips of the shoulders back. So keep that length and extension, inhale, and turn towards the back of the chair. So hold onto the back of your chair. If you don't have a chair, you've only got a stool, you can always do this and turn to a wall. Those of you with the yoga chairs, you've got to be careful that you don't slip and slide on the yoga chair because we're just using the back of that chair to turn the waist, to turn the spine, to revolve. Don't overturn the head. Let the shoulders release down away from the earlobes. Extend the crown of the head towards the ceiling and keep pressing firmly into the floor with your feet. Okay, releasing and changing to the other side. So either you turn yourself around or you turn your chair, turn your chair around. <clears throat> so again, pressing down with feet, lifting up with the chest, breathing into the space, turn towards the back of the chair. Now relax the shoulders down, release the sitting bones into that chair. Imagine your inner knees are super glued together. So feet pressing into the floor, knees together, inhale, lift your spinal column, exhale through the nasal passages and turn. And again, inhale and lift, exhale and rotate. It's a very strong action, so don't overdo. The chair is not going to move. The only thing that will move is your body. So you don't want to over move your body if it's not quite ready for that just yet. Okay, and releasing out of the action. So we're going to come now for some Marichyasana twists on the chair. And I'm using some foam pads in front. Now it might be that if you don't have any equipment, you've got to look around and see what you can use that would be a substitute for this, which might be a few books piled on top of one another. So I'm just going to show. So we'll sit forwards on the chair, stretch up, the elbow comes and we turn in a Marichyasana seated twist. So let's do that together. Lift, have your feet either side of your foam pads, hands onto your thighs, lift your spinal column, and then bring your left foot up onto the foam pads. So once you've got those up onto the foam pads, just interlock your fingers at the head of the shin and lift your chest again. So from here, stretch up with your left arm. So really extend from the hip to the armpit to the fingertips. Really get that length. Then hook the left elbow to the inner left knee, keep your left shin vertical and take your right hand onto the back of the chair. So it might be if you've got slightly different chair configurations that it's better to take the chair so that the back of the chair is near to a wall so you can put your hand onto a wall. So let the sitting bones release down into the seat of the chair as you revolve your navel to the right. Okay, releasing and going to the other side now. So right foot up, interlock the fingers, lift your chest, lift the crown of the head, press down with this lower leg foot, extend up with your right arm, really stretch into the fingertips, get that length and extension and then hook 
and turn. So as you turn, if you're on a slippy chair, don't allow the pelvis to slide around with that turning action. Keep pressing the sitting bones down into the seat of the chair as you rotate. Roll that top shoulder, that's your left shoulder, up and back and bring the chest through. Okay, and releasing. So we're going to come into an Adho Mukha Svanasana action with the hands onto the seat of the chair. You might need to move your mat slightly away from the wall, depending on the length of your mat and your chair seat length. So here, I'm stretching back. You've got to lift the frontal pelvic bones and lift the abdomen. You don't drop. I'm just going to show dropping, which is the incorrect action. That is dropping, all right? That is lifting. Hopefully, you will be able to see the difference on the screen with those two actions. You've got to keep lifting here on your frontal pelvic bones and moving the abdomen back to the spine. All right, so let's do that together. Hands onto the front edge of the chair. Now, if you don't have a wide enough chair, you might need to put some foam pads on there to just make the width a little, little greater. Take your feet back, press down into your hands, lift your frontal pelvic bones, move your abdomen to the spine, lift your frontal ribs, don't let them drop. Those of you who are very flexible will be tempted to let those front ribs drop, the belly drop. So you've got to lift the abdomen up, navel towards the spine. Imagine that your tailbone is like the tailbone of a greyhound or a whippet, where it curls round towards the navel. Push back with the roots of the thighs. All right, and coming out of the action now. Well done. Just stand in Tadasana for a moment. Inner edges of the feet together, extending down with the fingertips, lifting up with the crown of the head, weight back into the heels and breathe. You will need a couple of bricks if you're going to work in this way. If you haven't got a couple of bricks, then just work in the uh, way that's shown in the inset, just taking the legs up the wall. Or if you've got a period at the moment, or you find that this is uncomfortable on your back, then just work in the way of taking the legs up the wall as shown in the inset. Rolling onto the top of the shoulders. So you'll remember this action of tucking the shoulders under and then lifting up. So as we climb up the wall, we come more and more onto the top of the shoulders and then you can extend, interlock the fingers, behind the back, keep rolling up onto the top of the shoulders and then lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Now from here you're going to take, you can use one brick but I've got two here, <clears throat> you're going to take your two bricks and place them underneath the back of the sacrum and hopefully you'll be quite close to the wall. You can see that I've got my shoulders rolling under, I'm extending into the heels and resting in this action. So it's quite a nice way to work in an inversion. All right, so let's do that together. So start out about 15 centimeters away from the wall. Roll your shoulders under, press your feet hip width apart, into the wall and start to lift your pelvis. So, you can roll your shoulders under and lift up. Now interlock your fingers behind. Your fingers should be, when they're interlocked, you should be able to kind of touch the wall with your fingers if you're close enough. And if you're not close enough, then you need to wriggle in to get a little bit closer or you may need to start again and start off a little bit closer than this. All right, so once you're in, you press with your feet, you lift your pelvis, 
you roll onto the top of your shoulders and breathe through the nostrils. Then you take your bricks. Now you put your bricks so that they are vertical and when they come together they make a column and then your sacrum sits down onto them. And it's like a little shelf so you may have to wriggle in a little bit more so that the sacral region sits on that shelf and the backs of the legs come to the wall. Now if this is really just beyond you at this stage then don't worry about it. You do the legs up the wall without any support. It's absolutely fine to get that action and it will encourage the length in the back of the legs doing the legs up the wall. Eventually this will come a little more easily. Let the abdominal area be soft and allow the breath to flow. All right, so we're coming out now. Press your feet into the wall, lift up, remove your bricks, wriggle away. Just rest down with your legs bent for a moment. You can have your legs so that the shins are horizontal, the thighs are vertical and the feet are against the wall just to let the lower back ease out. And then when you're ready, roll to the right and coming up. So we're coming now for our Shavasana relaxation. You can use a bolster underneath your knees, you can use a blanket underneath your head, you lie down on your mat. Those who don't need anything, you can just lie down flat onto your mat. If it's cold, then put some extra heating on or put extra layers on, put on some socks, put blankets over you if you need to have more warmth. Have the palms, the hands facing the ceiling. If it's more comfortable for you, you can always take the lower legs up, up onto the seat of the chair. We've worked like that before. So start to let the body soften and release in this pose. Relax your feet. Release your legs. Done a lot of work on the abdomen, so let the abdomen soften and settle. Let that abdominal area feel broad. Relax your fingertips and release the palms, the hands. Let the whole body release to the floor. Soften the throat. Release at the base of the jaw. Relax your tongue. Soften around the eyes. Release across the forehead and observe the breath. So you've opened your chest in these actions. So see the breath traveling into and out of the chest region. So I am going to leave you in your Shavasana now. I'd like you to do at least a three minute Shavasana, five or 10 minutes if you've got the time to do it, but just feel the body accepting that prana, the energy that comes with the breath and restoring the vitality into the body. So thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoyed the practice. 
and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Namaste.